What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and we are continuing on with more Hail Caesar content here, right along with our uh, series of faction reviews here, and we got an interesting one today, uh, not one that uh, um, is really, uh, I think, all that well, um, or all that often played or represented, um, and really, um, I would say, you know, towards the uncommon end of uh, lists here just as far as again what people would typically want to collect or know about in the game So what we have here today is what they call the uh, Artaxiad Armenian list um, So roughly 2nd century through 1st centuries BC and just a uh, um, since this is a less common one, we'll go ahead and read the, the description here with you guys, too, just to kind of fill you in, and then we'll talk about the, the usual description um, and uh, army breakdown and all that. So things to search for here, Tigranes the Great um, certainly would be a starting point there, and then the Battle of Tigranocerta, I believe, is how we say that. So, again, as you can also tell, typically most lists have, like, you know, half a dozen uh, things that you can search for. This just has two, so that just tells you that's, again, uh, um, just a... Um, a lesser known um, uh, list here um, and faction. So, uh, so this army hails from the brief Armenian Empire that spread over much of the disintegrating uh, Seleucid domains and can therefore include a number of subject peoples from the adjoining regions. So, um, you have cataphract and heavy cavalry can be from Armenia, Gordien, uh, Adiabene, uh, Medea. Um, uh, Atropene, um, and adjoining regions of the Parthian Empire as well as Syria. Lighter cavalry come from the same areas plus Cappadocia, Cilicia, and uh, Kamagini, or Jean, I'm not sure how we say that one, to the west, and Iberia and Albania to the north. The same areas would provide uh, the infantry, who might therefore have the same general appearance as the Parthian or Hellenized troops. The Phalangites are former Seleucid troops, and the imitation legionaries, a deliberate and largely unsuccessful attempt to train troops to face the Romans. So um, just from that description, guys, right, there's a whole hell of a lot of different things going on here in this list, um, and that's kind of what makes it an interesting one to potentially um, think about collecting, um, just because you certainly um, can use uh, or reuse some models from existing factions to sort of make up the, the, the majority of your troops here since there really aren't going to be specifically Armenian um, uh, models out there. So, uh, as far as I know. Um, if you do, if you guys do know of some, hit us up in the comments. Uh, let us know. That'd be awesome. Um, and before we get into the list, uh, too, just want to remind people, um, check out the comment, or not the comments, but the, uh, the video description. Uh, if you guys do want to help support the channel, there's a link there to Warlord's um, uh, site, and if you pick anything up there, um, that um, helps support the channel. So um, please uh, give that a try if you could at some point. Anyway, moving on. So this is a interesting list, as we said, uh, earlier. So cavalry has to be at least 25% and infantry 25%. Uh, from what you do from there, um, just depends on how you want to go about it. So, you know, you could go either cavalry or infantry heavy, or just create a nice balance there. And um, that's all there is in the list, cavalry and infantry. There's no chariots, there's no artillery, there's no separate elephant breakdown or anything like that. So um, basically from there you have, uh, again, as much flexibility as you really want to go with. Um, and again, the infantry just um, uh, doesn't include skirmishers uh, in that uh, breakdown as normal, and um, skirmishers can be 50% of those divisions, and um, yeah, pretty typical there. But let's jump into these um, units here and see what's going on in this list. So... Um, we, on the cavalry side, get some interesting options to start off with here, and again, some pretty heavy um, hitters. So, uh, Cataphracts with Contos, again, massive clash of nine there, but again, drops off to six. No special rules there, and then if you want to basically save a point, which um, almost seems, uh, you know, kind of pointless, um, you could go um, heavy cavalry with Contos, just for one point cheaper. Um, now, again, there might be some differences there just um you know with uh, the cataphract uh, abilities but um it ultimately you know one point difference um is just probably going to come down more to your personal preference and style and what you want to represent but um nonetheless um you know you have just a, a standard heavy cavalry unit which is you know it'll, it'll do its job you don't need uh, that uh full of special rules or anything it's it's just going to do its job it's pretty simple and straightforward the list then also brings in horse archers as small units um with parthian shot for 19 points um again not really going to do anything in combat but gives you a solid and mobile uh long range option and parthian shot kind of takes that over the top as well so, and the, you know, you have that in quantity, right? There's no restrictions, so that's fantastic and um, pretty cheap overall. So multiple small units of that is, is pretty nasty. 
Then you have Light Cavalry with Javelins as small units, so it'll give you some more nasty short range ability. A little bit better on the uh, combat side there, but again, um, they can handle. Excuse me, they can handle other light troops potentially. Um, don't expect much uh, or too much from them in combat, right? But these guys do come with feigned flight, so they can definitely get in there and do a little bit of work and then bounce back out if, if they they don't really break the unit upon uh, initial contact there because you certainly don't want to get stuck um, in, in a war of attrition there with a, a sustained fight value of just three, right? That's not going to do you too well. And not with that um, morale save of six up. So, but nonetheless, Parthian Shot and feigned flight in quantity, guys, and they're both 19 pointers, so pretty cool overall. Then we have another um, feign flight uh, variant here uh, with some more long range firepower. Um, this is just a one of unit, basically. But um, Arab, ca uh, cam ugh, can't even talk. Arab Camel Mounted Light Cavalry with bows and javelins as a small unit. You just get the one unit, you might as well take it. It's only 20 points, um, but it gives you a solid two of long range and again, feign flight on a, on a missile uh, unit there. Pretty cool. Then we get into some of the funky um, uh, infantry options that we have here. So we have Imitation Roman Legionary Heavy Infantry armed with spears and or javelins. Again, keyword imitation here because if you compare this to um, those, some of the Roman lists that we'll be looking at soon um, <clears throat> and some that we've looked at in the past, right? It, it doesn't hold up. So now it's heavy infantry, um, so it has more or less a heavy infantry stat line, but just not quite as good as um, the true legions, right? So just a clash and sustain of six, uh, which is more in line with the medium infantry stat line, but it does bring you the morale save of a heavy infantry unit and no special rules there. So, um, you know, and while historically it might not have been all that successful, it's just it's a pretty solid unit there. So, um, and again, you have that in quantity. So, um, and you know, for 24 points a pop, that's not all that expensive, and it will do um, enough work there. Um, and then interestingly, of course, yeah, as it mentioned, now you can bring in also phal uh, phalangite heavy infantry with pikes, and they'll have the phalanx rule, so, you know, we know all about that from all the lists we've covered. So, again, just another interesting, solid option there, and uh, we know the phalangites can do work as long as you protect them uh, and keep uh, things off their flanks, which, again, you can... Um, kind of intersperse Roman your your imitation legions um, uh, legionaries uh, in between the pike units uh, if you need to or whatever you do um, and then have a pretty solid one to punch there. Uh, then we move on to light infantry levies of basically armed servants with just a hodgepodge of uh, weapons, um, basically cannon fodder, um, and there to sort of um, take up space and maybe briefly tar pit. Um, some units while you can get your other heavy hitters in place. So you just get one of these. Um, and again, Clash and Sustain is pretty um, uh, mediocre there, as is a morale save. Uh, they're levy and have wavering, right? So, um, you know, they're not going to last long. But um, a momentary speed bump, uh, potential distraction. And, you know, um, every once in a while they might actually, you know, put some wounds on somebody. Um, then, um, you know, going from the light infantry, we go back up into medium infantry here. Um, just with spears, generic medium infantry unit, and again, as we said earlier, um, you know, it's got that medium infantry stat line, so very much, uh, you know, like the imitation legionaries, it's just that the imitation legionaries do have the heavy infantry save that a, you know, a, a Roman legion unit would have, but these guys here are just a true medium infantry unit, so um, nothing, nothing special, um, but again, uh, not bad by any means either. Then we get into, again, more um, sort of other areas here. So Armenian or subject medium infantry archers. So uh, the list does pack, um, again, very good long range um, and on the cavalry arm, but also in the infantry arm here. So you just have access to um, solid normal size archer units um, with um, uh, not quite a, a true medium infantry combat line uh, against just fives on um, clash and sustain, but uh, that's still... Uh, pretty solid. Um, the medium infantry part more here is that you have archers with a five-up morale save, which is pretty neat, um, actually. But um, again, they'll, they'll they'll do their work. Um, and then Armenian light infantry with spears or javelins, um, kind of the same idea here, but just for 20 points. But these guys, again, um, are uh, just there to really be um, uh, annoying and harass people. And, um, you know, they can do a little bit of work in combat, but again, a um, morale save of six uh, is just um, not going to be very durable, but um, as, as a backup, uh, certainly. And again, they have that short range ability. Then Armenian light infantry archers. So if you do want to save some points over the medium infantry archers, um, you have another 
good option there, very good long range. And if you want to, you could also pay to reduce them into small units if you want to go even cheaper and just, um, you know, you have multiple small units dotting around with, um, you know, um, ultimately more shots pouring in um, as you can um, field multiple different units. And that way, um, you know, uh, the enemy has to pick and choose which units they're going to go after. So overall, pretty cool options there. Um, again, very strong long range capability in this list. And then a couple of skirmisher options. So skirmishers with javelins and small units. We know we know all about that because it's basically in every single list. Um, but you know they do their thing. They're there to harass and annoy people. And then finally another bow or sling option um, with no restrictions here. So um, skirmishers um, with bows or slings for 12 points a pop. So again, there's another fantastic range um, uh, of, of long range uh, support here for this list. And all capped off by um, the typical leadership aid across the board. Um, with commanders in general. So overall, just an interesting list. Again, it's a hodgepodge of um, sort of, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, Hellenized uh, troops in here. Um, again, imitation Roman legionaries, um, sort of former Seleucid um, type lists, but mixed in with a little bit of that heavy cavalry flavor that we just saw with the Sarmatians with uh, access to cataphracts and stuff like that. So it's kind of a uh, sort of pick and choose of some of the um, archetypes of different lists here. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, while there's not that many, um, you know, over the top or special rules types of units, um, you don't really need it. Um, again, these are uh, great just archetype units um, in their in their own right. Um, and here's just really going to come down to then being a good general and getting the most out of what these units do. Um, so smart gameplay here will certainly make this list um, uh, even stronger than it is. And again, really, um, you know, there's there's a lot of power here, even though it's a little bit deceptive, right? So again, just a nice cavalry infantry breakdown. Really, um, I think the list would just lend itself to go on 50-50. Um, or 60-40, uh, depending on how you want to go with it. Um, you can make an argument that both um, sides are, you know, almost equally strong here. Um, but, you know, again, the cavalry has your heavy hit, a lot of your heavy hitting power and mobility, along with um, solid ranged ability, and, um, you know, with, that's where your special rules are lying, basically, in the list with Parthian Shot and Feign Flight, um, and essentially having as much Parthian Shot and Feign Flight as you want. Um, so good stuff there. And again, they can do a little bit of combat work in a pinch, but, um, you have very solid long range ability there. And then your infantry, um, and this is probably one of the only areas you're ever going to see this. I, I was just thinking about this, you know, you're, you're going to have a pseudo Roman legionary unit, um, and access to like phal phalangite pike blocks, um, in the same list. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, so you can definitely get a lot of interesting, um, things out of that. And then again, on the infantry side, you're, you're, you're blessed with, um, you know, multiple different archer units, um, and, uh, you know, your solid skirmishers and all that. You don't need really need any special rules there. Um, you know, you don't need marksmen or anything else. Um, they're just, again, standard unit types, uh, just representing all these different types of peoples and stuff and influences, um, that kind of represented what the, uh, the, again, this brief Armenian empire kind of consisted of and ideas and things that they tried to incorporate into their, uh, their military. Um, so, um, you know, it's an interesting experiment and again, certainly something that's easy to, um, to field, um, just because it's taking existing unit types from other existing ranges that do have very good model support and then throwing it into, um, a single list here. So, um, so this is, um, uh, you know, I would say a kind of like a little, um, sleeper powerhouse here, really, if you, um, just get a handle on, you know, incorporating these different things and striking a good balance with some smart gameplay. Like I said, um, just overall really good stuff. So, um, let us know in the comments, guys, if you have tried this Armenian list or, you know, if you, um, think you're up to it. Again, uh, anyone who's played um, or has existing Roman um, and or Greek um, uh, miniatures, uh, any of the successor kingdom stuff, you could really certainly easily put this stuff together in a pinch uh, just to proxy it out. Um, and then, you know, if you wanted to, again, reuse a lot of those miniatures um, if you bought them separately and just uh, figure out what a paint scheme might be for these guys. Um, but it could be a cool um, modeling uh, opportunity, hobby opportunity there, and uh, just something probably fairly unique on the tabletop. You know, I can't imagine that there's that many people that have collected or played this list even. So, but let us know in the comments, guys, what you think. If you if you do um, um, have a, a list of these guys, or if you've um, you know played against it, um, let us know uh, what your experiences have been. Uh, I think it's a cool one. Um, 
and uh, certainly one that could um, do with some extra attention and um, representation on the tabletop. Um, and again, uh, if you guys haven't already, uh, hit us up with that uh, like and subscribe. Uh, it does help support the channel. And like we mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video, um, if you guys do want to support the channel even a little bit more, um, there is a link in the description there. If you guys head over to Warlord, pick up anything from them, that does uh, come back and help support the channel a little bit as well. So appreciate it if you guys could do that. Um, other than that, um, thanks so much for stopping by again, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and we will be back in the next one.